Washington, D.C. has had a vibrant nightlife in the 1990s, especially in Northwest D.C. The club was the place to get together with friends, meet up with strangers, or hook up with one-nighters. In my early 20s, the club was the time and place to demonstrate that I was now a true adult. I can stay out late, I can eat and drink whatever I wanted, and my look can be a little less conservative than it was when I was in high school. The thing that had me thinking back on the good old days is when I was driving along Georgia Avenue and I saw that familiar building at the intersection of Georgia and Missouri Avenue, the old Ibex nightclub. As I was sitting at the red light, I was wondering to myself, whatever happened to the Ibex nightclub? The Ibex nightclub was in a three-story building that looked like a regular office building on the outside but was a three-level party on the inside. Here's the Washington Post article from 1984 describing the Ibex nightclub in the early 80s. The Ibex nightclub began as the Ibex lounge that later expanded upward. The first floor jazz lounge is the Ibex most intimate room with 70 seats and plush fabric booths, dark walls and flickering candles on white linen tablecloths. The cozy, romantic feel of the lounge, which opens for happy hour, was completed with the soothing sounds of live jazz bands. The Ibex Club on the second floor had live shows and the third floor was for disco, connected by a very busy staircase which allowed you to roam to each room on each floor. On the second floor with its small dance floor and 250 seats, there will be live music and comedy shows on Friday and Saturday nights. Tuesdays had rappers. Wednesdays was oldies but goodies night. And Thursdays was open mic night so local bands can get on stage. The third floor had music played from a DJ. And the decor gets its feel from the worn out look of the wood forming lofts built above the bars. This not only is the largest room, but this is the Ibex's most crowded and loudest room. But here's a Washington Post article from 1997, stating that the city has finally closed the nightclub because residents from Ward 4 and City Councilwoman Charlene Drew Jarvis has been complaining about the nightclub for years. The Ibex has been the scene of repeated acts of violence and shootings. Neighbors have complained about loitering by drunken patrons, reported liquor sales to minors, and noise and trash generated by the club's customers. In September 1995, Mrs. Jarvis asked the Alcohol Beverage Control Board not to renew the club's liquor license. The board failed to honor her request the same way it ignored the residents who claimed that the character of their neighborhood was slowly being destroyed by the reputation of the club and its customers. Residents and businesses in the vicinity of the Ibex aren't the only groups in the city to be victimized by unruly local night spots. The other DC nightclubs have been reported as a source of a lot of violence surrounding other communities as well. Neighbors have protested in those situations too, but with the Ibex, the Alcohol Beverage Control Board seems to be dragging its feet. Then finally, the day came when the Ibex, known for its tough and sometimes violent crowds, was truly shut down. In 1997, Martha L. Dean assassinated DC police officer Brian T. Gibson after being thrown out of the club earlier that night. The DC Alcohol Beverage Control Board invoked a seldom used provision in the DC code to suspend the club's liquor license. About the same time, the city's Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs revoked Ibex's business license. City Councilwoman Mrs. Jarvis has said that she was saddened that there had to be a loss of life for the board to act. It's not only sad, it's outrageous. DC Metropolitan Memorial and Museum states that on February 5th, 1997, at 3 a.m., Officer Brian T. Gibson, 
age 27, was ambushed and was assassinated while in full uniform sitting in his marked patrol car at a traffic light outside of the Ibex nightclub at Georgia and Missouri Avenues Northwest. Within three minutes after the shots were fired, members of the 4th District Police Department apprehended Marthel Nathaniel Dean, who had been escorted from the Ibex nightclub by an off-duty police officer just prior to the shooting. Dean was found guilty of first-degree murder and is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Officer Gibson was a veteran of six years with M MPD. He survived by his wife, two children, parents, and a sister. The Brightwood neighborhood is a plain and ordinary residential area. There's no cool bars, no mobs of tourists, or bands of travel guides covering the, all of the neighborhood's activities. Without a metro station and a city hotspot, lots of DC residents have never even heard of the Brightwood neighborhood. On average, most of the Brightwood residents have been African American professionals. Now retired, they have been in their houses for decades. The homes that have turned over, and that's only happened gradually, have been sold to a diverse group of younger professionals. But unlike other affordable neighborhoods like Petworth or Bloomingdale, the area hasn't been seriously recognized by first-time home buyers. Long-term residents have said, it's not fancy, but it's solid. The houses of Brightwood would be the most recognizable element of the neighborhood without a nightclub. Driving through the area, you'll see row after row of reasonably sized, well-maintained row houses, duplexes, and detached bungalows. Realtor Gina Bevan explained that the houses are in move-in condition because people here keep up their houses, but most likely they'll need to be updated. They might have old paneling, she said. Normally, you can't just walk to get groceries or much anything else in this neighborhood. You need to drive. The homes are affordable for a reason. Brightwood is in a place where you can just walk to a variety of restaurants, bars, or stores for everyday needs. There was one sit-down restaurant, the Brightwood Bistro, now closed, had service and prices that received mixed reviews from the neighborhood customers. Other than that, the stores along Georgia Avenue and a few blocks further away on Kennedy Street, just south of Missouri Avenue, are limited to El Salvadorian, Caribbean, and Chinese food takeout. For some residents, the lack of a major commercial strip wasn't the only issue, but the lack of eateries just really didn't bother one resident, Ann Costello, a seven-year Brightwood resident because Silver Spring is a five minute drive away and Tacoma has great restaurants, she said. But Lee Alderman, an actor who's lived in the area for five years, would love to have some retail and restaurants nearby. I wish I lived somewhere where I could just walk into a friendly bar, he said. You have to drive for groceries here. In 2011, the federal government pulled out of the 62-acre Walter Reed Army Medical Center campus. Right now, there's a development being constructed with 2.4 million square feet of retail, educational, residential, cultural, hotel, and office space, including a Whole Foods grocery store and several restaurants. I was invited to an open house on May 11th 2022 to see mock-ups of new condo buildings not yet completed. The local news reported on the event because of its significance to the area. The Walter Reed campus has many historical buildings, beginning with the original Army Medical Center was founded in 1909 and named after Major Walter Reed, the doctor who discovered that yellow fever is transmitted by mosquitoes. But I'll go deeper in another video about the Walter Reed Army Medical's or origins. But the large Walter Reed campus lie outside and above Brightwood, and its proximity will affect the neighborhood. 
because the only major grocery store nearby was the Safeway and that's about a 10 or 15 minute driving distance from the furthest part of the neighborhood. Brightwood was a family neighborhood for decades, but as residents aged, the area gradually became heavily populated by senior citizens. Recently, young families, mostly Latino, have moved into the neighborhood and given it a more youthful flavor. According to one resident, the schools aren't the best, but the area is otherwise very family friendly and the streets feel peaceful and the traffic has a steady flow to it. Brightwood has several parks, some with playgrounds and community gardens. Fort Stevens Recreational Center sits at its most northern end of the neighborhood and Coolidge Rec Center sit just outside the neighborhood's border. Residents have said that the neighborhood is relatively safe, although they do acknowledge that the area do have a little bit of a drug traffic. But not so much of an issue of the crowds of men standing on the street corner, but it's more of an issue of the trash that's left behind, said another resident. The most common neighborhood requirement for young professionals in D.C. is having a metro station nearby. The most northern section of the neighborhood is closer to the Tacoma station on the red line and the Petworth station on the green line is about a 10 minute bus ride to the south of the neighborhood. There are many buses in the area like the 70, 71, 79 bus routes that run north and south on Georgia Avenue. The S1, S2, S4, and D33 run along the western end of the neighborhood on 16th Street, while the E2, E3, and E4 run east and west on Kennedy Street. And finding parking is not an issue in Brightwood, and the neighborhood is relatively close to Interstate 495. Like every neighborhood in D.C., Brightwood has its pros and cons. The number of affordable quality houses have been a major upside, but for anybody who's looking for an active nightlife, a cozy neighborhood restaurant, or even a simple coffee shop, Brightwood just has not been the place. But now there's a new hot spot in Brightwood, and that's the Walmart on Georgia Avenue. Georgia Avenue is a major roadway from Maryland and the intersection of Georgia and Missouri Avenue is one of the busiest in the city. However, the stores lining the avenue near the intersection are largely lower end. A large collection of liquor stores, hair and nail salons, and carryouts. Walmart came to DC and opened two stores at once. The first store on Georgia Avenue Northwest and the second on 8th Street Northwest opening on December 4th, 2013. The vacant X Chevrolet dealership on Georgia Avenue was a perfect location. The space wasn't being properly utilized and it's almost in the middle of the neighborhood, said one resident. Walmart is more likely to be making a large portion of its revenues from shoppers outside of the neighborhood, said another resident, Mr. Whelan a real estate professional and member of the Georgia Avenue Community Development Task Force. He's worried about increased traffic and decreased parking spaces as a result from the shoppers as well as the big delivery trucks. The residents who are also worried are worried about was this store going to bring chaos, trash, and rowdy crowds to our neighborhood? But all these years later, it seems like it's been good so far. Brightwood's boundaries aren't the most well-defined. The Brightwood Community Association considers the neighborhood's eastern boundary, Georgia Avenue. But longtime residents east of that street say they're in Brightwood too. I'll draw a white line to demonstrate how Georgia Avenue runs right through the middle of the neighborhood but everyone agrees that the neighborhood has Aspen Street to the north, Rock Creek Park to the west, but the eastern section of the neighborhood is in a little disagreement. Some say it's 5th Street, 
while others include themselves on 4th Street to the east. Missouri Avenue and Military Road complete the southern border. The northern section stops at Georgia Avenue. The Safeway grocery store and the CVS drugstore is in the northern section of the neighborhood shown in pink and red. And the Walmart is in the southern section shown in blue. Rock Creek Park, two blocks to the west. Silver Spring is two miles to the north. And all of DC is to the south. Now there is more construction in the area, so old businesses have closed and abandoned property is being torn down. The stores that used to line Georgia Avenue behind the old Ibex are being replaced with what looks like to be a new apartment building. The Ibex building itself has been renovated and added an extension. And this new combination has been a condo building since 2006. There are many new development projects in D.C. and Georgia Avenue isn't an exception. As the stores close and new housing is built and new businesses open, I'll keep you informed with updates. If you'd like to support my channel, you can hit the support me button on my channel banner or click the support me link on my about me page. Thank you very much for following me around Washington. I'm Dickie D in D.C. and I will see you in the next video.